thought I'd see the day where magical hats would see play. Hello, ladies and gentlemen, it is your host with the most, Avery LR32 here, and destroy the ever-living boo-boo game off of that like and subscribe button as we climb even higher the 1400 ladder, almost at 1300 out of habit. So, I came across this interesting 60-card Labyrinth deck that I really wanted to talk about because it's got some interesting stuff in here like boo-boo game. I guess I should get me a place out of these since we're always talking about a big old boo-boo stain. It's also playing Magical Hats with Drowning Mirror Force and Transaction Rollback to Transaction Rollback. Of course, the Elemental Burst being a god card, uh, Magical Hats and Drowning Mirror Force. Really interesting. Um... So th this, uh, let's let's go ahead and set the stage here for a minute, because I, I'm, I'm still speechless. This got top four at something. I don't know what. Um, I saw it on MCO40's channel. It got top four at something. I don't know if it was a four-man local. I don't know if it was a regional. Uh, it clearly wasn't at some sort of like world championship qualifier thing, like how that's been going on in South America, Europe, and soon here in the States and whatever. Definitely wasn't at any sort of WCQ. But... Whether it was a regional or a four-man local, I just don't know. So this could be absolutely garbage, and I actually do have opinions on playing Drowning Mirror Force and Magical Hats um, that we're going to get to in a little bit. But I think that the concept is interesting because Labyrinth especially, and you're going to probably hear me say this a few times throughout the profile, Labyrinth I feel is a deck, and I think it was Joshua Schmidt that said this, Labyrinth is a deck that... It's not about how you build it, it's about the pilot. Like, the better the pilot, the better the deck. Um, and it also comes down to, and I know for a fact Joshua Schmidt said this, is that Labyrinth is a combo deck and people play it as a trap deck. Take that for what you will. There are a lot of different ways to build Labyrinth. I don't know if this is really correct. Like, I feel like you have better options, but we'll we'll get into that, right? So let's go ahead and dive on into this list here. We're, of course, playing the one silver, or actually, they're both silver castles. I'm just an idiot. One lady and one lovely Labyrinth. Three Black Witch, but that's all that we're playing. We're not playing Wantes. We're not playing Snake Eye cards. As far as I can tell, he's playing this because it's just an extra body that you can dump onto the board with Fenrir. So... That's cute, I guess. Uh, of course, the three Fenrir. We're also playing Labyrinth Archfiend. So it gains four attack for each normal trap with a different name in your grave. Your opponent's monsters cannot target fiend monsters for attacks except Archfiend. You can only use each of the following effects of Archfiend once per turn. If a trap card is activated except during the damage step, you can special summon this card from your hand. If this card special summon, you can set a normal trap from your deck that can only be activated when an attack is declared. So, like, Mirror Force, Magical Hats, um, the Fair Welcome Labyrinth, which he's also playing, which says when a monster declares an attack... While you control Fiend Monster, target a card on the field, negate the attack, and if you do, if you do destroy that targeted card, then you can set one non-Labyrinth normal trap from hand or deck. So anything that's not a Labyrinth uh, normal trap. That's kind of interesting, but again, it's also a battle trap in a world where we're like, who the fuck's playing battle traps? But anyway, uh, we're playing one Sharvara. There are some Labyrinth builds that play like a little mini uh, Unchained package, so the Sharvara is not that surprising. Um, three Arios Butler, three Ariana, uh, Ariana, Ariane, whatever, Ariana Labyrinth Servant. Um, and then we're playing the one Ecclesia because we're playing Triple Nadir Servant, Triple Punishment. I've seen some builds play this. Th this build seems to kind of pull from a few different theories and ideas that other builds have used in the past, such as like, you know, Dogmatica Punishment with one or two, or even some builds I've seen three Ecclesia with Nadir Servant and all that good jazz. Um, three of the Chandelier, uh, three of the Stove Torb, and then one of the Cuckoo Clock. Once you get these things in rotation, these cards are hella good. Like, I almost feel like they need to be hit in some regard, but Labyrinth isn't all that good, so they can kind of stay where they are, I guess. Um, three copies of Nadir Servant. Remember that this can grab from Deck or Grave, so your Ecclesia is always live. Uh, three extra because that's standard. Uh, one Labyrinth, Labyrinth, and then one Labyrinth setup. So it's a quick play spell. Target two of your Labyrinth Speller Traps that are banished or in your grave, except setup. Shuffle them into the deck. Then if you control Fiend Monster, you can set non-Labyrinth normal traps or different names directly from your deck equal to the number shuffled. So this can set up to two from the deck. And in the 60-card pile, I mean, you're going to have options, like whether it's Torrential, Magical Hats, I guess, um, Terrors of the Overroot and Afterroot, which Afterroot's actually really interesting. Um, so you have options. Very, very interesting. Uh, one Welcome with three of the Big Welcome. That's pretty standard as far as I can tell. Uh, three Transaction, three Imperm, three Karma Cannon, uh, one of the Fair Welcome. We already talked about that. Three Drowning, three Torrential with the Elemental Burst. These are just, I guess, transaction rollback targets. I, I think more the Elemental Burst and the Mirror Forces and anything else because I think Torrential is decent. I've, I've seen it played in other builds. Um, one Terrors of the Overroot, um, two copies of Magical Hats. So 
During your opponent's battle phase, choose two spell or traps from your deck and one monster in your main monster zone. Special summon them as a normal monster's attack and defense zero in face down defense mode. Set the chosen monster if it's face up. Shuffle them on the field so you just, you know, rearrange the positions, right? The two cards chosen from your deck are destroyed at the end of the battle phase and cannot remain on the field except during this battle phase. Fun fact, I remember playing this back in the day when uh, Gear Town and like Ancient Gear Galatron Dragon were fairly decent and right actually when Gear Town came out because that came out later. Um, but Gear Town could easily miss timing because it says when it's sent to the grave or when it's destroyed, whatever it was. Um, but you could use Magical Hats, and then at the end of that turn's battle phase, the Gear Town would pop, and then you could get out Galatron Dragon. So the opponent would be screwed either way. If they attacked into the Gear Town, you were getting a body. And if they just didn't attack, then you survive for another turn, and then you got out Galatron Dragon. Yeah, that's how Yu-Gi-Oh was back in the day, boys and girls. Uh, three punishment with uh, one Terrors of the Afterroot, and then we already mentioned the big welcome. So Terrors of the Afterroot. Target one monster in your opponent's graveyard. Special summon it to your opponent's field. Then you can banish one monster your opponent controls. Then if your opponent has a banished monster or monsters, which they will if you just did that, return one of them to the graveyard. You can banish this card from your graveyard except the turn it was sent there. Target one level one monster in your graveyard. Shuffle that monster into the deck. Then you can set one Terrors of the Underroot, Overroot, or Terrors of the Afterroot from your deck, which is really interesting that you're able to set the overroot um i don't think well yeah you could set the cuckoo clock i guess um that that's literally your only target i don't know if that's going to come up often but i mean i guess it could I and mean, you're also playing overroot which is a good card um extra deck it's pretty much just waking the dragon targets because they're playing waking the dragons with some other stuff um exterior one last warrior one birth at Meth mythical king of phantom beasts um and then the chimera king of phantom beasts i'm pretty sure these are just punishment targets because then you can banish them to summon fiends which you're obviously playing because you're on lab uh, one Guru, one Ince, these are just punishment targets. One Chaos Angel and one Ink Master Pack Bit. The Pack Bit thing's interesting. I don't really see how often that could come up, but being able to summon something from the back row is cute, I guess. Um, the Chaos Angel definitely makes more sense. I'm kind of confused on the Pack Bit, I'm not going to lie. Uh, one Sky Crisis, one uh, Meteorologic Aggregator. Again, another punishment target. Same with the Tri Brigade Arms and Bathless 2. Uh, Soul Lord of Yama, one Soul of Rage, one Little Knight, and one Muckraker, or as some people like to say, Muckracker. Uh, and then we got three Nib, three Droll, three Waking, two of the Boo Boo game, or as I'm going to call it, Boo Boo Stain, uh, one Eradicator because it's a God card, and then 3D Barrier. So what do I think about this? Um, Magical Hats is fucking garbage. <laughs> like, uh, I'm not even going to try and bullshit you with this. Um, here's my biggest thing, right? And, and this kind of sets the precedent for this deck, which... I, I feel like almost I almost want to say regardless that it sets a precedent, but like if this top four to regional, cool, but at the same time it's like, but why though? Like, yes, you have the surprise factor that you're playing mirror force cards that you can transaction roll back into. You're playing magical hats that you can transaction roll back into. That's cute. But if you have the rollback in grave. And you've got these cards in there with it. The opponent's going to know that the Magical Hats and Mirror Force is a factor. And they're probably going to play around it. So, like, why play these five cards when you could just play cards that are better? Like, it doesn't make sense to me. So, again, I, that's why I almost want to say if this top four are regional or something, I almost want to say that doesn't matter because these cards are just trash by proxy. And... This deck is absolutely garbage if it, like, got top four to four-man local. Like, if this came just from a local, then this build is garbage, I feel. Because you have so many better options available to you. There are 60-card Labyrinth builds that I have seen that kind of do something similar where they take ideas that other builds have done and they capitalize on that to make it a 60-card pile. Even the 60-card piles aren't playing fucking Labyrinth Archfiend. This card... This card just doesn't seem good. I feel like, again, I feel like you have better options. Like, After Root, sure. Fair Welcome, why? Uh, this card, I'm kind of torn on it, but I almost want to say, like, again, why? The Black Witch thing is fine, I guess. Like, it's a decent card. But I almost feel like you could take out these other lab cards that no other builds play. And you could play, like, I know people are going to destroy me in the comments for this, but it's just the fact. You could play, like, Snake Eyes cards with the Black Witch, or you could even, like... Bro, you could take out these three cards and play Wanted's, and then you could guarantee yourself a Black Witch to your hand to then, like, I don't know, dump Silver Castle to Grave and, like, revive it with, like, a Welcome Labyrinth Trap or something. Um, like, you have other options that you could do. Cut back on some of the other cards, maybe play, like, a little mini Snake Eye Engine, and then that way, like, 
you can play Snake Eye cards with Lab cards, which I have seen before. I think it topped in Europe where someone played Labyrinth with Snake Eye cards. And I think even like a small cash Tira package of like Unicorn and like Birth and stuff. It was actually kind of crazy because if you think about it now, you've got your normal Snake Eye stuff where you're ending on like Apo, maybe Pit Knight, Early Mask, Rain in the Back Row, Flame Bridge, all that good stuff. Plus like three or four back row of like imperms punishments maybe karma cannon you got welcome lab to like summon out a big body like that's pretty crazy um but i just don't think that magical hats is the way to go i feel like if you want to get spells and traps into the grave that bad why not just play foolish burial goods because i don't even feel like that these cards are worth transaction rollbacking into um, like again, with the Mirror Force thing, I feel like we're just in a time now in Yu-Gi-Oh! where Mirror Force cards, battle traps in general, just aren't good anymore. And that's really a shame to see. Like, I mean, if we shuffle this up here, one, two, three, four, five. I mean, you're setting a big welcome, you're gonna Nadir into Ecclesia to get you a punishment, and then like you have a couple cuckoo clocks in hand, I guess. Like, that's not terrible. Uh the Archfiend's gonna probably end up in the grave for discard fodder off the the furniture. I don't know, man. I feel like there are easier, well, not easier, but I feel like that there's better builds that you can get into lab without playing cute things. Like, will it go off once every five to ten games? Sure. But as much as I want to see Magical Hats be a thing, I just don't think it's even worth it to transaction roll back into, honestly. Like, again, would you rather transaction roll back into Elemental Burst or Magical Hats? Like, the Elemental Burst thing here is actually really smart. Like, take a page out of Joshua Schmidt's book of Paleo. Play the Elemental Burst as, like, a one of. Hell, play it as a three of. Bro, you could take out Drowning Mirror Force and put in, like, Balance of Judgment, and you could transaction roll back the Balance of Judgment and maybe draw five or six cards. Like, that seems pretty good. But I don't know. It's cute. It's cool. I want to put it out there for the community to see. I'm no Labyrinth expert by any means. I just, I don't think that Magical Hats is the move, you guys. Like, what what, what are we doing? What what are we doing here? In the words of Joey Diaz, what, what are we doing here? <laughs> so, guys, let me know what you think. I could be totally wrong. I really could. It just, I feel like that there are so many better cards in the game. When we get Fiendsmith cards, th this deck becomes garbage. Like, you just play Fiendsmith cards because you're already playing Fiends. Why would you not play the Fiendsmith cards? <laughs> Guys, thanks for watching. Let, let me know what you think. Hopefully, I wasn't too much of a dick in this video. It just, I'm, I'm really torn. It's cool, but I think it could be better. Thank you guys for watching, and I'll see you in the next video.